Good evening, and welcome to another edition of All or Not According to Jack, with your host, Jack Taldano. Uh, if I sound like my demeanor is a little different, and I'm in a little bit more of a so somber mood, I think you can guess why. So, uh, for lack of a better term, I'm going to call this episode A Tale of Two Cities. So, yes, A Tale of Two Cities in New York sports. So, uh, very interesting day in uh, New York sports. So, uh, you had, uh, well, three things today. So, you had the uh, both the New York Giants and the Green Bay Packers flew over that big pond uh, known as the Atlantic Ocean to go play a game in, uh, what's it, Wembley Stadium in London. And uh, it was a thrilling game. It was a, an amazing game. Here, you know, here, the the Packers were heavily favored, and uh, watching that first half, it it certainly looked like they, you know, as prophesized, they were going to beat the Giants, because here the Giants, that you know, these guys are uh, the walking wounded. Uh, quarterback Daniel Jones uh, twist, you know, hurt his ankle in the last game against the Cowboys, and uh, and. Wisely so, they didn't try to, to use him for any quarterback keepers in the first half of the game. I guess they saved that for later in the game uh, when the Packers weren't expecting it. So there's that. Uh, Saquon Barkley, who, uh, you know, has been doing good this year. Uh, they even used him because of their limited offense, and we'll get to that in a minute. They, they had to use him for some wildcat plays, which... I am enjoying the hell out of that. But uh, so they have a depleted wide receiver staff. So you, you had Sterling Shepard, probably the top receiver, go down with an ACL tear. He's gone for the year. Then you have uh, uh, this wide receiver, Kadarius Tony, who, you know, they paid a lot of money to get him from the Lions, I believe. And he sucked. And, and now he's injured. So... They've had to do it basically, you know, with uh, Darius Slayton, who was their third wide receiver. Is now their first wide receiver. Uh, you know, they don't have a star wide receiver, and they have a bunch of young tight ends. And then their two stars on the offense are basically Saquon Barkley and Daniel Jones. So how are you going to beat a good team like the Packers? But the Packer, Packers in their infinite wisdom – they um, they let him hang around and hang around and hang around in this game. So Giants came back in the second half. <laughs> Some gutsy calls. They actually took the lead, you know. And granted, their their defense, led by a guy who uh, who used to be a talk show, uh, uh, no, a game show host, uh, Wink Martindale. <laughs> Who would have thought it? Wink Martindale coaching the, the Giants defense, but I tip my cat to, my I tip my hat to you, Wink. You've done a really good job keeping this team in games and giving the Giants a chance to come back. So and came back, they did. They ended up beating the Packers 27 to 22. Uh I couldn't watch the game. It was televised at 9.30 this morning, New York time, because the Giants were over in London. Now, I could not watch the game because Susan and I were upstate working on our project, as we usually do oh, pretty much every weekend. Luckily, Sue was able to remotely set the game for me on the DVR, uh, and I had intended to watch it at some point today. Uh I ended up putting it on this evening, and we'll get to why. Um, so then you have the New York Jets, who started at their normal 1 o'clock slot, uh, New York time slot for football, and during football season. Uh, they played the Miami Dolphins today. Now, the Jets have been horrendous for the last several years. Uh, however, they pulled up off of few upsets. I mean, they pulled off an upset in Cleveland. Nobody expected that against a better Cleveland team. Uh, last week, they pulled off an upset win in Pittsburgh against the Pittsburgh Steelers. 
Mind you, this is only the second time in all of the Jets' 50, 60 year history that they actually won a game in Pittsburgh. Uh, granted, the Steelers are on the downswing right now, not playing too well. Got clobbered by the Bills earlier today. 38 3, I think it was. Anyway, I digress. So here you have a Jets team that, uh, for you, those of you who are not really familiar with football, the Jets are in the AFC East division, and uh, their divisional opponents are the Miami Dolphins, Buffalo Bills, and New England Patriots, all better teams for the last few years. And the Jets have suffered six uh, – uh, they got swept by all three teams the last two years. That's 12 straight losses within their division. And what did they do today? They came out. Kept it close, and uh, the game got away from the Dolphins, and they ended up, uh, uh, you know, looked like the game looked like a slaughter at the end, forty to seventeen. So, good on you, New York Jets. So, so everything was looking great in New York sports today. Uh, you know, Giants won a game that they weren't supposed to win. Jets won a game that they weren't supposed to win. Uh, Giants are four and one. The Jets are three and two. So five weeks of football in the New York area suddenly looking quite good. And then you have this garbage. I can't even wear this fucking hat. Here's a team. They won 101 games. They, you know... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call this season the big tease because that's basically what it was. You know, they played great in April, May, June, even part of July. At one point, they had a 10-and-a-half game lead in the division. Now, uh, 1986 spoiled us because back in 1986, they took a big lead and they never looked back. Nobody came close to catching them this year. And that is the last time they won a World Series. Uh, 101 wins. You'd think they would go deep into the playoffs. But, uh, you know, while we were all, uh, you know, with our minds on C SOT Fest last week, uh, Mets were playing their, probably their biggest series of the season against the Atlanta Braves. They, couldn't, they needed to win one game, which they couldn't do. They got suffered a three game sweep in Atlanta and that basically um that basically decided the division. Atlanta Braves took the division, so they got that buy in the wild card round. And you know what? Even then after they got swept by Atlanta, I, I knew it was over. I, I'm not surprised that this happened. I mean, this is a team that so let's look at the Mets history. So they called the 69 Mets the Miracle Mets. They won 100 games. They beat a Baltimore Orioles team that they weren't supposed to beat uh, in five games. 1973, they only won 82 games, but they beat uh, uh, a Cincinnati Reds, big red machine team that they weren't supposed to beat. Got to the World Series. Uh forced the series to seven games against the Oakland A's. Uh, you know, they weren't supposed to get that far, but they did. Uh, they didn't see another postseason until 1986. Uh, they tried to blow it several times. They ran into problems against the Houston Astros, but they got past them. They ran into some problems against the, uh, the Boston Red Sox, but, you know, in game seven, as they were leading, they were trailing three nothing as late as the sixth inning until they finally came back, won that, won that uh, World Series. Knock on wood. So cut to 1988. Here they were favored to go all the way again. They got beaten by by an underdog Los Angeles Dodgers team who beat them in seven games. So. That, I would say that was the beginning of my misery as, you know, and disappointment as a Met fan, uh, you know, expecting things that I shouldn't expect. So 
from 1988. They go all the way to 1999, never made it back to the playoffs. So now 1999, they played a little over their heads. Uh, they weren't supposed to get to the playoffs. They did. Uh, they beat a better Arizona Diamondbacks team to get to the NLCS. Uh, they forced the sixth game against a better Atlanta Braves team and lost that series. 2000, again, they're a wild card team. They got all the way to the World Series, lost five games to the Mets, to the Yankees. Again, did not get back until six years later, 2006. Um, so, again, they were supposed to go to the World Series. So, got past the Dodgers in three-game sweep. Then they, then they meet up with the Cardinals, a team they beat back in 2000 to get to the World Series. And, again, home field advantage, a team they were supposed to beat, they lost game seven. That was, and I was actually at that game. So I saw the, the Andy Chavez catch. We were, you know, still talking about it years later, but here's a team that can only score one run and lost to the, uh, to the Cardinals three to one. And you know what? I saw that big curveball that, uh, what the hell was it? Uh, oh shit. What the, I forget what that pitcher's name was. Let me see. Okay, so had to pause for a second to make sure I had my facts straight. So I was at that 2006 ALS NLCS uh, game, and I saw, I watched that game. I was, actually, I was, uh, so if you remember City, or no, Shea Stadium, they had the mezzanine, the third section. I, I had a mezzanine box seat in left field. So I saw the Andy Chavez catch, and I thought that that would turn the game around. It didn't. Um, so they're trailing three to one, uh, bottom of the ninth, and Adam Wainwright throws this curveball that drops into the, into the uh, uh, what the heck is it? into the strike zone. Beltran looks at said curveball. Game over. Uh, I, I, I don't think I, I, you could have heard a pin drop walking out of Shea Stadium that night. Uh, I think so. As we're all walking down, uh, you know, down the, uh, the rampway to get to the ground floor, everybody somber mood nobody says a word all of a sudden you hear one fan yell fuck what are you gonna do meanwhile the cardinals are quietly celebrating on the field so that was the start of my real mets misery so then 2007 they're leading they had like a seven eight game lead as early as september they let the phillies overtake them they didn't even make it to the wild card. 2008, same thing. They had a lead in September. Blew it again. Uh, that's got stupid in that last series. Jose Reyes was celebrating and pissed off the Florida Marlins. So they acted like it was their World Series on uh, the last game of the season. Beat the Mets, knocked them out of the playoffs. And that's how uh, they closed Chase Stadium. So, 2015 was Mets played over their heads. They, um, what did they do? They got to the World Series thanks to the bat of Daniel Murphy. Um, 2016, one game playoff against the, uh, against the uh, San Francisco Giants. Couldn't hit the, I don't know who the Giants pitcher was, but they, just couldn't touch him. They end up, ended up losing that game three to nothing, which brings us to this year. So the Mets won a hundred games. Oh, I'm sorry. Let's go back. Let's backtrack. 2016 to now 2022. It, it, it the Mets averaged like one playoff appearance every six years. At, you know, 
you, you hope for better. Well, they, they just don't get in every year. So they get in this year. 101 wins. You, you would have thought would have been better. So what do they do? They show up tonight uh, against the San Diego Padres, game three. In a three-game series, mind you, all three games played at City Field. And you can't win two out of three against the Padres. Come on, guys. You know, what can I say? You know, they're – and I I belong to, to a uh, – to some Mets sites on Facebook. There was this uh, site called the New York Mets Fan Group, and this guy was riding them all year long, criticizing, criticizing, and calling people like us who were rooting on the Mets, calling us pom-pom fans. You know, I finally got done mid-season. I just deleted that group. I couldn't, li I couldn't listen anymore. So, you know what? Maybe he was right all along. We are pom-pom fans. We were fooled. Uh, you know, this season is the big tease. You know, you win 100 games, you would hope for better. You, you, you don't want to go home, you know, in a three-game wild card series where you lose 6 nothing, and you only muster one fucking hit. Uh, I mean, there are those, oh, Joe Musgrove in San Diego had a had a great outing. You know what? I don't care. You know, we were supposed to show up and we were supposed to be better. You know, maybe maybe this 100 wins was a big tease. Maybe we aren't as good as we think we are. I mean, granted, Steve Cohen, since he bought the team, they have improved. We actually got to the, to the series, to the playoffs this year. But you know what? At the trade deadline, in July, what did you do? You, I mean, you got some less less than adequate, you know, replacement players. Who, you know, you would think you you would bring on players that are going to help your team. So they bring in this guy, Daniel Vogel, back who looks like he's two hundred and seventy pounds soaking wet. Here's a guy busting out of his uniform. Probably the first couple of weeks, you know, guys, jolly, good sense of humor, good for the clubhouse, and he was hitting a few home runs, but, you know, once the dust settled, what did the guy do? Nothing. Nada. Uh, then you bring in this guy, Darren Ruff from San Francisco. Guy did shit. Uh you brought this catcher, James McCann, or now they call him McCant, which rightfully so. Here's a guy who lost his starting job to a guy named Thomas Nito, who, who's a perennial 220 hitter. Uh, a guy, McCann, who can't, couldn't even hit 180 this, this year. And then, of course, uh, oh, big acquisition. Let's get this guy. Tyler Naquin from Cincinnati. What has he done? Typical Mets. Bring in these second-rate players. You think you're going to win with a bunch of second-rate players? Well, no. Th that doesn't happen. I mean, granted, our starting pitching didn't help us toward the end, but you know what? Without our bats, it doesn't matter. You know, you, you can't throw a no-hitter every game. I mean, people want to sit there and criticize Charlie Bassett and Max Scherzer, but hello, you score one fucking run in two games. You can't criticize the starting pitcher. You know, baseball is a game in the postseason where, you know, all parts have to be working equally. You cannot expect the pitcher to throw nine goose eggs up against another playoff team. You've got to hit the ball. You got to get hits. You got to score runs. You got to give that pitcher some run support. When he has to be perfect, you know what? Only takes one mistake, and then you know the floodgates open. You know, two nothing becomes three nothing, then four nothing. In this case, in this case, it was six nothing. Padres got to tip my hat to them. They just kept chipping away, chipping away, 
And you know what? The avalanche happened. And you know what? I'm sorry. I'm not going to say congratulations to this team. You don't deserve it. You know, granted, you're in a better place than you were last year. You won 101 games. But you know what? You stepped up. You stepped up to the next level. So when you step up to that next level, you ex you're expected to perform at that next level. And you didn't do that. You, you show that you, you, you're not as good as your 101 wins. You know, so you really need to retool next year. You, you may, DeGrom may not be here next year. And quite honestly, I wouldn't pay the guy $40 million anyway. I mean, makes me wonder why you paid Scherzer $40 million. I mean, granted, he got us through most of the season, but when it really counted, he didn't get it done. He's starting to show his age. Uh, I mean, what do they call this, uh, side issues that he had or whatever ailed him, but... Oh, yeah. So so that's that. So, you know, I was thinking of having Pete Pardo and uh, Charles Al Alvarez and possibly even... Uh, uh, George Parsakian, uh, some Sam's boyfriend who I've uh, done some uh, wrestling shows with, having another baseball p panel. But at this stage, what's the point? I mean, season's over. All I can say is, thank God, baseball season ends the end of September, early October, and football season starts. And, uh, so basically for me, it's, are you ready for some football? Are you ready for the G-Man? Yeah, uh, a little comic relief. Here's a hat that I bought for myself last Christmas. What do you think? Let me know. I'm going to be using it a lot this year. Maybe uh maybe I'll use it to drown my sorrows a few times, but uh, I'll show you the side. Yeah, yeah, there you go. So um, so that's that. So at least I have you know just like every other year, I have the Giants to fall back on. Um, two thousand six. Uh, or rather 2007, the uh, the Mets disappointed me that year. What did the Giants do? They went uh, 10, uh, nine, yeah, 10 and six, got into the postseason and upset the Dallas Cowboys, upset the Green Bay Packers, upset the New England Patriots and won a Super Bowl. Made me forget all about the Mets. 2011 did it all over again. Nine and seven this time, but they won a division. Uh, again, upset the Green Bay Packers, upset the San Francisco 49ers, upset the New England Patriots again. Uh, all I can say is, like I say every year, thank God for football. This is Jack Toledano speaking for all or not, according to Jack. I just want to thank everybody who watched my episode uh, last week, uh, uh, SOT Fall Fest uh, Recap and Pictures. Uh, it was a big success. So thank you to all who watched. And I know uh, I owe you uh, all my metal heads out there that uh, watch my show, Top Three Metal Albums uh, by Year. I know I owe you an episode. I'm going to try and record one tomorrow night. Have a good night, all. Bye.